Hey everyone, it's Deli here. Welcome to a brand new video. Today, I thought we'd do a build in the Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle because it's the latest pack to come out. And I thought we could do a 100 baby challenge home in the Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle. And I'm really excited because this is the first time I've been able to use all of the existing packs with the Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle. I don't know why every time I say it, I say the Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle, not just Eco Lifestyle. But anyway, um, yeah, it's the first time I've been able to actually try the pack out with all of the other packs included. So I just went to town on this build. I've used um, anything. In my game, I've avoided using custom content though. So if you guys want to download this, I'll put it on the gallery under the username Deligracy. And yeah, I just wanted to make a 100 baby challenge home because uh, I also live stream over on Twitch. And right now we are focusing on the 100 baby challenge every second stream pretty much. So I thought, you know what, let's move the family. I think we're only up to baby number 11 or 12. So we're not really speeding through it. <laughs> but I thought let's, let's change our scenery. Let's move to a new home and let's try and keep our energy bills down. I wanted to make sure that this house could basically provide its own electricity and water. And I'm pretty sure that I succeeded at that. So if you guys do want to download the house, it should be pretty much self-sufficient with uh, making its own electricity and water. And originally I was going to have two separate buildings. I was going to have a building for the kids and a building for Mama Cedar. But in the end, I decided to combine the two and make it just one house that isn't like a huge 100 baby challenge home. I feel like sometimes when people do the 100 baby challenge, as you get through it, you can end up making a lot of money depending on whatever you decide to do to make money. And then you can build huge homes. The problem with that is though, that we would have to have a lot more solar panels, uh, a lot more wind turbines, all of that jazz to make sure that we could cover our electricity and water. So I decided to keep it a little bit more compact, but still have enough, uh, enough room for everything we needed. So we're going to definitely have a lot of items for a skill building for the kids and the toddlers. And I also thought it would be really cute to have ladders going upstairs instead of staircases, because in this eco lifestyle pack, we did get the addition of ladders. Thank goodness. I've been waiting for ladders for such a long time. I feel like so many players have been. Uh, so I decided let's not use staircases. I want to see those kids going up and down the ladders every time. So I decided to keep Mama Cedar's room and the toddler's room play area and bathroom and potties and all of that down, downstairs because obviously toddlers can't go up the ladders. Um, but the kids, all of their stuff will be upstairs so they can get um, up to the top of the house. And I thought the new grass roofs were really nice. I love this diagonal aspect to the home just to make it look a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting. I also like the idea of having uh, some cutout parts in the roof. So we actually end up putting all of our water energy items uh, in the little roof cutout so you can go up there for maintenance. And yeah, lots of solar panels as well. The only thing with solar panels that is kind of annoying is that if they break and solar panels break a lot in this pack, unless you up upgrade them, um, when they break, you have to actually take them off the roof and put them on the ground for your sim to fix them. There's not really a way for them to just kind of look up and fix it. So, I mean, I guess that's what happens in the real world, uh, but it can be a little bit annoying at times if you haven't upgraded them. And since my sim hasn't made any eco upgrade parts, it may take us a long time before they stop breaking. <laughs> so we will have a little bit of extra work to do in this pack for sure. And I wanted it to look a little bit farmhousey. I don't think that this area that we're in is like a farm area, but looking at the houses surrounding it, there's a lot of um, wood on the homes. So I thought, okay, well, let's keep that wood on there. Let's make it like white and black to kind of make it slightly more modern looking and um, yeah, and then give it a bit of a farm feel. So that's what I'm going for today to give that eco 
natural sense to the building, I suppose. And also in my 100 baby charge, we've been making money through gardening. So we have basically a whole heap of birds of paradise plants and pomegranate plants. And I think white lilies is the other one that we have. So on the right hand side of the property, I've left a lot of space so we can actually put all of those plants there, have them undercover so they'll be fine in whatever season. But I'm also really curious about the hydroponic planters that we have now. So I assume that means they're self-watering and I think they would still need to be sheltered though. So we could actually implement that into the build too or gameplay um, as we progress a little bit and settle into our new home. So that's what's gonna be on the other side of the property. But like if you were doing the 100 baby challenge and your Sims an artist or a writer or I don't know, whatever, they want to do, uh, there's definitely room on the other side of the property to do that. So it's pretty good for like a 30 by 20 lot. I think there's, it, we fit a lot in in this build, so that's quite good. And also in this pack, as you contribute to uh, living a more eco-friendly life, the world around you will change as well. So all the houses and the environment that looks like it's a little bit trashy at the moment, um, well, the houses don't look trashy, but the surroundings look a bit trashy. That's going to hopefully clear up as we play the challenge too. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. Right now we're just working on the bedroom and also a bathroom. And I realized that the bathroom could have been a little bit small, but I think, I think we just about fit everything we need in. So we've got three showers and two toilets i think i add one extra toilet it kind of feels like a public bathroom but you know if you're having 100 kids you need several toilets and i don't want them to be teenagers getting embarrassed you know showering when the other one's peeing so we want them all in separate rooms so to avoid any um any hassle or embarrassment from them i mean if a kid died from embarrassment that's minus one baby from the challenge and we can't afford to lose any kids <laughs> We cannot afford to do that. And then the beds, I I love the new beds in this pack, um, but I decided to use the show hidden objects cheat as well to see some of the fabricated furniture items that you can use because I just thought they were so pretty. I really wanted to build with them. So we're actually going to delete these beds and put in the fabricated beds. And the fabricated beds, usually you would have to make at the fabricator machine and level up your fabrication skill to create. So I have cheated a little bit to get those, um, which is slightly naughty, but I just, I love these beds. I think they look so cute and they also look really nice in alternating colors as well, just to make the room a little bit more interesting and to make it look a little less clinical and repetitive. Uh, and I wanted there to be a little bit of a Ikea feel about the room in the furnishings. So we've just got like plain white bedside drawer tables that look like they're straight from Ikea, which I love. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully make a house that you guys like. I do like this build actually. I'm excited for you guys to see the finished product. Down here is going to be Mama Cedar's wing. If you have been watching the live streams, uh, they're actually uploaded on my second channel as well, which I'll link in the description down below. If you just wanna see the 100 baby challenge, they're all uploaded there. But uh, Mama Cedar's room became really uh, full on. She had a daughter called Charlene and Charlene really wanted to be well, Charlene thinks she has great taste, but it's really a little bit questionable. So she wanted to make over her mom's room. So her mom was like, yeah, just go for it, do whatever you like. And she chose like the get famous leopard print beds, you know, get famous wallpaper, really bougie and full on. But I think Mama Sita now just wants to live a bit of a calmer life and it'd be a little bit less over the top. <laughs> She wants to live that eco lifestyle. So very different to Charlene's taste to this build. And we even built her like a hot pink, get famous uh, wardrobe basement where she had this huge wardrobe. And it was basically just Charlene spending all of her mom's money to create what she wanted. So this is a little bit more suited to Mama Cedar. You know, from having all of the kids, you grow a lot as a Sim. She definitely uh, sees sees life a little differently now after 11 or 12 kids. And I also wanted to include a cauldron. I know some of you guys are like, why is there a cauldron there? The cauldron is really handy for the 100 baby challenge because it holds more meals in it. So you can make like a huge 
batch of mac and cheese and like feed all your kids in that one batch over two days. <laughs> so because it makes more meals, it's actually a really handy way to do things instead of like making multiple meals and putting them in the fridge. The only thing I haven't added to this house that maybe I should have is from, I think it's get to work, the bakery fridge item because you can just put lots of plates in the bakery fridge and the toddlers are able to just reach it and grab their food whenever they're hungry so you don't always have to feed the toddlers. So I kind of wish I put that in here. I will probably add it in gameplay but I think that's the only thing that I really forgot. And I also like this dining table from university because it it's higher up. You have stools at it and I don't know why but it just seemed a little bit more like kitty seating perhaps, um, maybe because the high chairs are a little higher, they look a little ju more juvenile to me perhaps, or like more like something you'd see at a school. So I just decided to do that for a change. The highest stools are from Tiny Living Pack. And then these couches are also fabricated couches. So these were from the hidden objects cheat. The coffee table is from Island Living, I think. Yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure that coffee table is. So we're kind of going with that a trending look and feel of, what do you call that furniture? Wicker furniture. So that's a, that's a bit trendy at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of that in Australia and probably lots of other countries right now. My favorite fireplace. This fireplace is basically my favorite thing from the pack. I love that fireplace so much. And I love that it fits on a diagonal wall as well. So you can actually put it in the corner of the room, which I didn't do for this build, but I, I have done with a few other builds. And then because this room was so big, uh, I like open floor plans in The Sims because I feel like The Sims are able to route really easily and get around things really easily. Uh, and they don't really get stuck around furniture. So I wanted the open plan living room, but at the same time, I didn't want it to look like a gallery or some commercial building. So I decided to put up these screens from Eco Lifestyle with uh, the vines coming down them. Uh, so I thought that was kind of a nice way to section off the living room from the rest of the place, make it feel like it's a little bit more intimate uh, and less open. But I mean, if that's not really your style, if you think it's a bit much, you can always remove those walls and just leave it open or put other screens in. Just whatever whatever you like. You can, you can do whatever you like with it. I give you full opportunity and reign to take over this build if you feel so inclined to. And please tweet me if you do or tag me on Instagram or something. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys do to these builds. And we have some jars hanging down. There's quite a lot of industrial pieces in this pack too because it does focus on items in your game, build and buy items that are eco-friendly, but it also will show items that are more industrial friendly. So you can actually change your eco footprint in the world by using either industrial focused items or more nature driven items. So using things like woods are going to give you a positive eco footprint. Whereas if you use a lot of metals and industrial items, you're going to get an industrial footprint in your world. So this does have a blend of both because I really love the industrial aesthetic. And I think paired and juxtaposed against items that look like nature and look more organic. I just think it's a really cool contrast. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a mix, but hopefully it, as a whole is going to contribute to our world in a positive way, <laughs> hopefully. And then this little section here is our little toddler playroom. So that's got like some uh, grass in it. And the toddlers are going to also be in the same room as the babies. And I did that because usually our babies age up to toddlers and we don't have another baby before the toddlers have aged up to kids. So I don't think a crying baby is gonna wake up our toddlers. If we put the bassinets in the kids' room, whenever the baby cries, it'll wake up all of your kids, which is really annoying in the challenge. So I definitely wanted to keep the toddlers and kids separate. And then over here in this wing, we have a study room. And again, I've used some fabricated desks. I've just mixed and matched uh, all of the chairs and the desk. And we're going to be doing the same with the wallpaper. You're probably also looking at this build being like, okay, why are all the walls just plain white? That's looking really 
not that nice. <laughs> and what I've been doing for quite a while now is I tend to furnish whilst I'm building. And sometimes I put in the wallpapers last. I just like working that way because then I know all of the, all of the furniture pieces fit in really nicely and there's kind of a space for everything. Whereas when I used to just build a house and then furnish afterwards, I'd find I'd need to expand rooms or make them smaller because the furniture didn't fit in or the other way around, there was too much space around the furniture. And this way I find it is just a little bit more easy to build. So we will be making the walls look nicer. There will be windows as well. It's not going to be a windowless build. <laughs> and I also like placing the windows last because I don't want to have a window like behind the TV where the TV is. At least I know where I want my TV to go that I place a window in, if that makes sense. So before we get onto the wallpaper and the windows and completing the build, we also need to build our, uh, what do you call it, greenhouse, uh, which is going to be open. It's just going to have a shelter over it. I didn't wanna have a full-on greenhouse that's fully indoors. I like the idea of it being a little bit more farmy, looking a little bit more open. So we're about to, to build that and the pomegranate trees didn't really fit in that well. And because we've got a lot of money anyway, I felt like we didn't need to have the pomegranate trees always in season. So I also had a lot of plants to sell to, <laughs> which is a little crazy. Uh, we made a lot of money just then, so you can kind of see why we don't need all of the plants in season all the time. So I was able to have a bit of a smaller plant area than what I have in the past, just because we are financially comfortable now. Um, so yeah, this is, this is pretty much the exterior of the build. I mean, the shell of it is pretty much coming together now. We're just gonna add a few trims and the windows, but this is the basic look and feel of the build. And I have to say, I love these white industrial pillars. I love them so much and freezes around the house. I think they look so nice. And I love the roofing too. The roofing's technically a solar panel roofing texture, I think. So that also is a plus to our eco footprint, print, which is handy. Uh, and then I don't know why I still have, oh yeah, the cauldron's going to be outside. That's right. So we're gonna put cauldron outside undercover. Previously we had it inside and it started looking very witchy <laughs> and witchcrafty. So I thought, you know, let's try it outdoors this time. It kind of looks a little bit more like a huge, I don't know, something you'd cook pale in maybe that I've often seen outdoors. I don't know if pale is traditionally made outdoors, but whenever I've been to a party or something, they always have it kind of next to the barbecue. So it just reminds me of that a little bit. Up here is where the water, I don't even know what you call it, like the water thing is gonna go. Oh, and I was tr kind of testing out the hydroponic planters then, but I was like, eh, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Okay, so here are the water, I don't think they're called water generators. I don't know what they're called, but they're up there and I may have actually placed them wrong because I can't remember where the Sims get off the ladder. I think the Sims need the right hand side to get off it. So I might have, I might need to rearrange that a little bit during gameplay. Still getting used to these ladders. And then of course I wanted a little bit of a pathway to show people where they gotta go. So this pathway, I'm going to use a different flooring to the one I've used right now. I wanted something a little bit warmer so we're gonna have like a, a reddish stone that we change it to. Right now it's looking a little monochromatic for my liking. Wanna brighten it up a bit. We're gonna put some trees in as well. We've got the toddler slide out here. Going to add a couple of other things too. And we also add a few vines to the outside. Oh, and a basketball hoop from City Living is also really handy in this challenge because it helps your Sims get some more mobility skill which is handy. And all of the wind turbines I'm putting at the back of the house. So it's a little bit more hidden, which I think is nicer. Oh, and at the end of this build, I actually flipped the whole thing around because I realized that I built it the wrong way uh, on this lot. So it's actually meant to face the other way. So I do flip that to upload to the gallery. Just so you guys know it, in case you already are familiar with the lot and you're like, you're building it the wrong way around. So it's easy to flip it. And I love that roof garden up there too. I think that looks quite nice too. And we're also going to use a lot of the university windows as well that I haven't used that often. I feel like we got such a mixed batch of windows and doors in university 
Discover University. I keep going to say university life, Discover University. And I just, I don't know, some of them I just never use. So I thought, Let, let's use more of them in this build. Right now we're using the eco lifestyle windows, but you'll see the university ones soon. Like this one. I think these are really handy. I love this window actually. Uh, and it also helps to have the black windows on the white part of the house because it ties in the black side of the house too. Uh, so we're placing a few of those around and by doing windows at the end of the build, I can really place them in spots that they don't interfere with any of the objects. So, you know, I tend to not usually put windows behind stovetops. I know you can put glass behind stovetops. There are buildings that do that. But most of the time, I feel like it looks a little unrealistic in The Sims. So um, that's an example of where I wouldn't put a window. So I like doing it after I place the stove, you know what I mean? And the TV is the other one. Often I put a window right where the TV is gonna go and I then have to delete it. So all of these windows are looking pretty nice, pretty unified on the exterior of the house. Like it all looks like it goes together. It's all lined up nicely. This side door we didn't really need so I'm about to delete that in a second. And I love that door from Eco Lifestyle too. That door in like the black metal, so nice. <laughs> so just placing all of those around. Uh, I also love the new bikes. I think those bikes are really cool. I don't know what kind of bikes they're actually based on. I guess they're based on some kind of bikes. Maybe they're like electric powered bikes. I don't know, but I think they look awesome. And oh, the other thing was I was thinking of using the windows from Moschino Stuff Pack. I really like those windows because that has the industrial vibe as well. Uh, but a build I recently did on stream, I used a lot of those windows. So I kind of thought, oh no, we better do something slightly different. And yeah, just using more of these items. I also end up using some of the new awnings here from the pack, which is exciting. I haven't used those awnings yet. And they, they come with two different kinds. They have the glass ones, and then they have this other one that looks like it's kind of wooden maybe? Oh, it's not glass. <laughs> and I think, I think I prefer those ones to the glass ones in this building, uh, just because it seems to kind of go with the rest of the build better. And then I also trialed these ones too. Uh, I can't even remember what pack those awnings are from, maybe cats and dogs. So they didn't really fully go together. So I decided to delete those. New chimney from Eco Lifestyle too. Love the new chimney. The chimney of fireplace, I like a lot. And I thought, well, why not, while we're at it, put a little grub house in there. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much, that's pretty much the whole build. So let me know what you guys think, think in the comments down below. I'll do a walkthrough through in a moment. And oh, over here I was like, oh, there's so many new tiles. I don't know which ones I wanna use. Uh, I have enjoyed using black wallpaper though. I have indigestion from my tea, excuse me. I'm loving using these black walls. I've never used black walls much in builds, but I feel like they look really nice with this pack. Very excited. And then this room, I was like, let's just go full blown color. I'm talking red, yellow, blue, <laughs> matching the furniture perfectly. You gotta, you gotta have fun in a hundred baby home. You know, you gotta have color. And once we get the wallpaper in, it really does transform the space. You can match it to these fabricated rugs too, which look really nice. When you fabricate items, you get to use different dyes with them. So, you know, all the fabricated items end up matching perfectly in their swatches because you're using the same dyes for them. And then over here, I was actually thinking I would use a Strangerville light because it's, it's got a nice industrial look to it. So we have one of those feature lights in the house, which I quite like. And then the kitchen that I was really stuck with. I'm like, I don't know what I want to use. Do I want to use bricks? Do I want to use this eco lifestyle metal? Do I want to use stone? But in the end, uh, I think I, did I go with these whitewashed bricks? I kind of thought I went, oh yeah, I did go with this exterior. I think it's actually meant to be timber, but it looks like metal cladding to me. I, I kind of am really wanting us to get some of those typical like farmhouse, like modern day farmhouse metal cladding into this house. I see it all the time on Grand Designs. I'm like, ah, oh, I really wanna put that in my house. But I felt like this was the closest wallpaper to that. 
So let's just pretend it's more of a metal than a wood because wood behind the stove, I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> I mean, at least it's more eco-friendly, you know? Putting a birdhouse outside as well are also some of the existing pictures I had in their inventory from artworks the kids had done. Uh, some extra windows so it's nice and bright inside and that grub house, I wonder if they fixed the glitch with that because previously I could not figure out how to how that worked and I think there was a glitch in the review copy I had of the game so I'm really curious to see if that's been fixed or if it was meant to be like that, if I can understand how to use it again. Uh, I love this broom from Laundry Day Stuff. It just makes the house look so much more realistic. Uh, but let's jump into looking at the build now. Let's check it out, you guys, and do a walkthrough of it. Okay, so here is the finished house. Uh, yeah, it's looking nice. I think once the environment is cleaned up a little bit more, it's going to look much nicer, but the chimney is going, so it's looking very, very lived in now, which I like. Uh, and I love how the plants like sway in the wind. Isn't that pretty? I do like how they have that movement. But anyway, let's go into the house. It looks like there's already some mac and cheese over here ready for the kids to get into. Oh my gosh, now I feel like mac and cheese. Uh, there's a sim waiting to go inside, but we're just going to ignore them. And I love how the other Sims could see her at the door and they're just like, yeah, nah, we're not gonna let you in. She's left now. But anyway, this is the main living area. So we've got the higher dining table. We've got this nice little reading area in here. The lounge room's always, already got a whole heap of toys too. TV's on, looking nice in there. Toddler area here with the new lights. Little craft corner too. Uh, and walking into the kitchen, the kitchen's very open and easy to access too, which I quite like. Um, but we're, we're gonna probably use just the big cauldron most of the time. If we go through the kitchen, this is where our baby is crying and we have the toddler beds too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that baby feel really, really happy because I can't, I can't deal with crying babies. Let's do super efficient baby care. Put the roof up again. Okay, so the baby's being taken care of by Mama Sita, who's also going to have an eco makeover soon. So there's the toddler beds. How cute are they? I think they're the cutest toddler beds I've ever seen in the game. This is our baby daddy wall of fame. Mama Sita's room over here. And oh, I did actually use a little bit of custom content after I placed this in my game, uh, just cause I like those curtains from Kisha and stuff back. In the bathroom, we have some terracotta tiles. Uh, and also the new tiles on the ground, which I thought was nice, uh, nice and warm compared to the rest of the house. Over here, this is the study room, really colorful and kid friendly, big windows. And then let's go upstairs, up the ladder. Up we go. Okay, and this is the kids area. So we have a nice spot where we can look at all of the school projects. Uh, they they don't have many clothes, um, there's really, <laughs> There's only one clothes area. And then this is where all of the beds are. And I couldn't find curtains to match those, like these windows. So there's only curtains over there on the darker wall. <laughs> but that's nicely color coordinated as well. There's a little playroom in here that actually has some fresh air coming in because upstairs we have those water, uh, those water energy making water things, <laughs> I don't know what you call it. And then in here's the, the big bathroom. There's some lockers here as well. I think those lockers came from, oh, did they come from spa day? I'm not sure, but there's just like toilets and showers down here. I think this one's a shower. Yeah, two showers, three toilets. Uh oh, that's not a good sign or sound that we just heard. Um, but yeah, that's basically, that's basically the house. You know, it's simple, but it's got everything you need. Our garden is starting to grow as well, which is exciting. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think, everyone. And thank you for watching. As always, I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'll speak to you soon. Tag tag.